Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about the 7 cures for a lean purse. And this is from the book The Richest Man in Babylon, one of my favorite books. And this is basically a part 2, we've already covered the 5 laws of gold and you'll definitely want to check that video out first. And we could also call this video 7 cures for an empty bank account or wallet in the modern terminology, but it's all the same thing. And we'll start out just like last time with our little economic person here. And this little person is going to need to do the exact same thing as last time, which is divert. 10% of their income because the very first cure for a lean purse is start thy purse to fatten Which basically means pay yourself first put 10 in take 9 out if you make 10 a day and by paying yourself 10% first for a future investment Future passive investment then in 10 days you'll have an entire day's pay in that pool and even before you've invested it you're ahead one day in 30 days, you'll be ahead three days. In 10 months, you'll be ahead an entire month. And the idea here is not just to create a big, huge nest egg that you can live off later, but that's one part of it. But that nest egg should get bigger because you should invest it. So your one day that you're ahead could potentially become several days in the future. But either way, if the purse is empty, you're taking all of the money out, you're not leaving any in it. If there's no money in the savings account, it's because you're not putting any money in the savings account. So the very first habit to form is to pay yourself first at least 10% for future investment, period. Now the second cure for a lean purse is to control thy expenditures, which sounds pretty obvious, but clearly most people are spending way too much money on things that don't matter in terms of your economic future. They don't pay you money. They cost you money. Here I'm talking about rent, food, gasoline. Of course you need to eat, of course you need gasoline to get to your job or whatever, doesn't change the fact that it's not an asset, it's a liability. It's something that costs you money, it does not pay you money. So all of those liabilities, all of those expenditures have to be completed with 9 out of 10 of what you make. The 90% that you have left, and we'll put this in red just so it's clear that this is not an asset. You got bills. You got food fuel, gasoline, you got relationships, entertainment, things cost money. Maybe there's even riskier types of investments or even we could call them gambles. You can totally participate in high risk investments, gambles, flipping things after all of this is done. After you've paid yourself first, after you've taken care of the necessities, then there's room for extra. And the idea is to have more income at the end of all of this, by the way, so that you can have more of this stuff. I want my bills to go up. I was poor for so long the bills were at a bare minimum. It sucks living at the bare minimum. I still want the bills to go up. Still want to live a little bit better, you know what I mean? Still want to be able to do more for my relationships. Still want to be able to invest in things that might not work or that I might lose on. So in the second cure here, how to control your expenditures, this is what you have to work with. You cannot touch this. You have to eliminate something here if you don't have enough to live on 90% of your income. And that's regardless of what the income is, even if it's already a low income. A lot of the stories of this book will relate to the fact that really, when you start to live on 90%, it actually makes no difference. Just like people quit smoking and they think they're going to have 300 extra bucks a month, and they don't. It just gets absorbed in and leveled out. And that's exactly what happens when you reduce everything that you can potentially spend to the maximum of 90% of what you make. Everyone can do it. Even if you're a homeless person begging for change, for every dollar you get, one dime goes into something that you're going to invest in a secure investment. This would bring us to number three. The third cure is to make your gold multiply. Make thy gold multiply. We've already done this here, we've already written it down, that the first cure is to actually accumulate this money for investment, to discipline yourself for the constant accumulation of 10% being saved for your future. And in the third rule, the objective is to make that money that you've already saved work for you, produce children for you, gold children. And as we talked about in the five laws of gold, you also want to put those children to work. I mentioned that if you pull out the profits of this investment, that's included in your income. Now you have a bigger income. Well, that's great. But the magic of compound interest is that those savings stay in and they continue to accumulate more than what you put in. So when you save your 10% now, it ends up being more than 10% later. So you're not just saving 
10 years worth of what you need to live and then at the end of your life you're going to live on the, that 10 year income no the idea is to save that 10 year income and turn that into a 40 year income through proper investments over the long term taking advantage of compound interest now rule number four it's kind of self-explanatory again a lot of this overlaps with the actual five laws of gold but that makes sense it's not that complicated in the five laws of gold so it would make sense that curing a lean bank account would be the pretty much the exact same process so cure number four is basically to follow the rules of gold or the laws of gold and guard thy gold this means you don't make foolish investments it means you do consult with the appropriate experts before investing it means that you do do your own homework it means that you don't let people sell you pipe dreams and drag you into ventures that they're not experienced in etc you make smart decisions on what to do with your money so you guard thy gold this is particularly with this the last thing you want to do is invest all of your savings into something stupid. You really want to put these into reliable things. And again, in the modern world, lots of those look like registered retirement savings plans and GICs and tax-free savings accounts and those types of things where compound interest happens. Now, number five is a bit controversial because several modern financial gurus don't recommend owning your own house that you live in. Several of them recommend owning a house and renting that house that you own and where you live they recommend you rent that well that's probably appropriate for some businesses especially if you're on the road a lot uh, for, for a long time i could live in a boarding house or, or not even have anywhere really that, to, to live actually you know just stay with people because my lifestyle was very transient i was moving around all the time it did actually make sense to do that and if you live in a city it probably is more reasonable to rent than to buy you're probably not going to be able to afford or even be able to get a mortgage in a major city. I know I couldn't afford a house in the place that I grew up in. And most of the people that I know who grew up there can't afford it either. Prices have gone up. Cities are expensive. Now I live in the country and we ran the math. When we bought this house, we had nothing. Me and my housemate, Chef Norman. We both didn't have a proper place to live. Both didn't have proper incomes at all. But running the numbers, we couldn't afford to rent a crappy place. We couldn't afford to rent a very inadequate place. It was too expensive. Even in our town here, we would pay way too much to rent. It wouldn't be worth it. We ended up getting a very cheap house. Deals are available out there. And now our bills are very low. And I've paid off my half, so that bill doesn't exist. And it is actually a profitable investment at that point. We haven't paid any interest. We paid it off without interest. It's pretty incredible. It has gone up in value. Both because of the work that we've done to it, and because of the market, we could probably get triple for this house right now. Now, I said in the last video that flipping houses is a business. It's not necessarily a passive investment. And I stand by that. That is true. But if you are paying way too much to live, it might make sense to buy the house first. The security, the feeling of security that comes with that is very good. A lot of people say, ah, it doesn't mean much to own their own stuff. Coming from a guy who didn't own anything, yes, it absolutely makes a difference in your overall well-being to own your own home and your money is basically safe in it for the future if you've already paid off your house then you know what, what is the end goal of all this is so that you're secure in the future if you already own your own house you've taken a lot of the pressure off of yourself you don't have to pay a mortgage or rent so anyways there's mixed opinions on this depends on where you live depends on what you do but i do recommend buying a house that is a good deal putting your money into that not all of it but pay the house off own your house Maybe get another one with multiple doors and rent that one out as well. That's a good future investment that will come up here on the other cures. So we can jump right into the sixth cure actually because the sixth cure is to ensure a future income. The key, underline that, income. It's not to increase the future nest egg. We're already doing that. That was already rule number one in the laws of gold. And that was already cure number one in three in the seven cures for the lean purse. But number six means income remember the stuff that's in the passive investment if you do pull out the profits that is income but the idea is for you not to need to pull out those profits quite honestly the idea is that we should continue to be able to live on 90 percent we aim to make more in that time and that our nest egg should actually remain our nest egg in the best case scenario you don't even need to pull that money out when you're old why because you have incomes now the book goes into some more old school things like owning land and renting it or loaning money, something like that. In the modern world, I believe this is more like owning businesses. You want to own businesses, things that pay you money, not take money. They're not liabilities, they're assets. You want to invest in assets aside from your 10%
passive income portfolio, you also want to invest in active investments, things that will actively pay you tomorrow and 50 years from now, hopefully. And remember, that was already a section here. There's money left over to put into things that may or may not work. Things that may pay more than a residual compound interest program, and they may not, because they rely on multiple factors. Those are businesses. So what it really looks like when we're insuring our future income is to actually add more incomes. Maybe one of your hobbies, you can make it profitable or more profitable than it already is. Maybe it is a new business. Maybe instead of working for someone else, you go and start your own business and have people working for you. This is another income. Maybe you have a YouTube channel and that has another income. You know, you're doing the crushing it thing. So at this point, your nest egg's getting bigger, but your income has also gotten bigger. That gives you more room for all of this stuff, including the types of investments that pay you more money in the future. Assets. Now, cure number seven is to increase your ability to earn. And I find this actually the most profound one. All of these are fairly mechanical, but the final cure for the lean purse is to make yourself better. Basically, it's to improve. It's personal development. And the book says to cultivate thy powers, right? So we, we worked on all this to have a better life, right? We've taken care of the stuff that matters. We've taken care of the future stuff. We've invested in incomes. All of that is fantastic, but we can only get paid as much as the value we bring to the market. Our investments can increase regardless of our personality or our skills or our commitment and dedication. Investments should function regardless of who you are. Your RRSP will perform just like the next person's RRSP. But the book points out something critical and it pops up all over the place in the personal development world. It is that desire comes before accomplishment. And this is not just wanting a bunch of money. This is desiring to become better at what we do. If we make things, better at making those things, filling in the gaps. Are we good with working with people? We'll work on that. Improve your ability to sell yourself and market your products. Improve your ability to lead people. Improve your ability to make the things that you make. Improve your value as an influencer, right? Improve your mind, improve your voice, improve your health, improve your performance. Cultivate thy powers, get better. Some people are already good at what they do and they simply don't follow this and so they don't have any money left at the end of it. Sports stars that make millions of dollars, they spend millions of dollars. They didn't do the 10% divert to passive income. They didn't control their expenditures. They didn't follow the laws of gold and they lost their money. It happens every day. And there are also people who are committed to getting better. And those people probably will be better. Doesn't mean that they're gonna be the best, it means that they're gonna be better than they were before. And that I think is the most profound part of this whole concept. And if you follow these seven cures for a lean purse, you should no longer be broke anymore, number one. And number two, you should actually improve your incomes forever onwards. And that's pretty much the video for today, guys. I have applied these and it has totally changed my life and I do hope that you guys can apply them too. And if you have any success stories, go ahead and share them in the comments. I'm sure lots of people would be interested in seeing them, including myself. We can take control of our lives. We can make our world a better place on the small scale and on the big scale. But we're probably not gonna make much of a difference if we don't make something of ourselves. And I, for one, would love to live in a better world, but my little world right now is better because of this. And if you didn't know, I have written a book about my financial journey and how I applied these rules and other things from financial books. And because of that, I used to not have enough to pay my bills and now I have more than enough. And I'm pretty sure that's the goal for most people. And if you buy the extended version, it actually comes with The Richest Man in Babylon in the back of it. It's all together in the same book. It's a very good value. You can buy that right off Amazon from Canada and Japan. I know it's a bit complicated. The rest of the countries, you can buy the full extended version with The Richest Man in Babylon from my website, noticebooks.org, from me at the same price. And on any Amazon, you can find the regular version, which costs less and just doesn't include The Richest Man in Babylon. And of course, the audio and video versions are free, as well as all of my other audiobooks. They're always free. You can find all of them on my website, noticebooks.org, and here on this YouTube channel. And that's it for today, guys. I appreciate you. 
Until next time. So here's how I explain it to kids. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Key to understanding economics. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Marketplace is also described as reality. Reality, the marketplace. Now, it takes time. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but we don't get paid for time. It's very important for kids to understand, as well as adults. We don't get paid for time. Mistakenly, the man says, well, I'm making about $20 for an hour. Not true. If that was true, you could just stay home, have them send your money. But you don't get paid for the hour. You get paid for the value you put in the time. So we don't get paid for time, we get paid for value. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions. Is it possible to become twice as valuable and make twice as much money in the same time? Could you become three times as valuable, make three times as much money in the same time? Is that possible? The answer is yes, if. It's possible to do much better at the marketplace if you go to work primarily on yourself. Learning to work primarily on yourself. Get better. There isn't any of us that can't get better. So turn on this whole idea of personal development and personal growth. I'm telling you, for things to get better, you gotta get better. Don't ask for it to change out there. Ask for you to change here. Don't ask for a more favorable wind. We call that naive. Don't ask for better seed, better soil. This is the only planet you got. Just ask that you can get wiser and stronger and better and be able to take care of your own responsibilities. You say, well, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life? The challenges that I know I'm gonna face. Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, and better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, may not even recognize you. How strong you're going to be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. First talk I gave, I stood up, my mind sat back down. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. And I did it again and I did it again all those many years ago. I did it when I was scared and I did it when I didn't want to and I did it when I was ill. And I did it when it didn't work well and I didn't did it when they didn't appreciate it. And I didn't a lot of times when I didn't know much what I was doing. I just did it anyway. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference in where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year is not the wind that blows. And the wind is blowing around the world. All kinds of things are happening. But what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sail, sets a better sail. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got's what's available. Don't curse what you got. On this planet, all we got's the seed that's here, the soil that's here, the miracle of life that's here, the opportunity that's here, the seasons that are here, that's all we got. Wherever you've come from in your country, the economy you got, that's all you got. In America, our economy, that's all we got. The government, that's all we got. The marketplace, that's all we got. Whatever you do, don't criticize all you got. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your, of your future. Life and business is like the changing seasons. One of the best ways to describe life, it's like the seasons. You cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. And see, that's how life gets better for you. Not by chance, but by change. I have found in my experience that income does not far exceed personal development. Now, sometimes income takes a lucky jump. But sure enough, unless you grow out where it is, it'll usually come back where you are. Life has strange ways. If somebody hands you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire quickly. So you get to keep the money. Otherwise, sure enough, it'll disappear. Somebody once said, if you took all the money in the world, divided it up equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. Incredible. And make sure to check out my channel for many other videos on a whole array of subjects. And my other channels are all in the description of this video. If you didn't know, I do have a lot of reviews on my Instagram, at Ryan Alexander, and my website, noticebooks.org. And all of my books, audiobooks, and links are available on my website, noticebooks.org.